Mask mandates are disappearing quickly for most travelers and commuters, even as the COVID-19 level in local wastewater does continue to tick up a bit. Here to answer your questions about that and more is Dr. Shira Darone, the hospital epidemiologist at Tufts Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. All right, let's first talk about flying in the U.S. Most airlines and airports are now mask optional. In your opinion, should anyone out there consider changing their travel plans? I don't think so. I really think we need to dispense of the idea of my mask protects you and your mask protects me, which was really a concept that was born in March of 2020 out of the fact that we were urged to make our own masks at home out of cloth so as not to affect the supply of medical grade PPE for healthcare workers and those cloth masks were not expected to work very well. So everyone needed to wear them in order to see an effect. But with the availability of medical grade masks and respirators, people who choose to do so can right. protect themselves without having to be as concerned about what others are choosing to do. Uh, Dr. Face masks, as we've been reporting, they're no longer required on the MBTA's trains or buses. So how does that change the infection risk for commuters? Look, if you're vaccinated and boosted and not immunocompromised, you're well protected against severe complications for COVID-19, regardless of whether you wear a mask. If you're high risk or risk averse, even, and you wear a medical grade mask or respirator, you're well protected against infection. And now we have an abundance of effective preventative medications for the immunocompromised and treatments for anyone with even a single minor risk factor. And we all know that high quality masks cost money. How often would someone who rides a bus or a train every day have to buy a new mask? Yeah, there aren't a lot of data on that. You definitely want to change your mask when it's dirty, wet, torn, or when the straps are stretched out. But I would very much like to see equitable distribution of high quality masks mm -hmm. at no cost to those who would benefit from them. Um, as you know, children younger than five, they're not eligible for vaccines. Um, what's your advice for families who use public transportation and they, they're worried about possible infection risk for their baby or their toddler? You know, people who live with someone who's high risk or unable to be vaccinated may want to take extra precautions when commuting, like wearing a high quality mask. But it's worth remembering that in general, unvaccinated children are still at lower risk than vaccinated adults. And there was a recent CDC publication that showed that COVID um, is less of a risk to, ch risk to children under 12 than flu was in the three years prior to the pandemic. So even if you need to take your small child on public transportation, and although no one wants their child to get sick with anything, the risk to them is in line with other risks that were generally considered acceptable prior to COVID. All right, it's so good to be reminded of that. Dr. Duran, thank you so much for your time as always. Thank you, doctor. Great to see you. Stay well.